Hello there folks, I'm Dan Brown from Sort of Interesting and today you're joining me on the beautiful Langothlin Canal for a slightly experimental type of video. Sorry, how incredibly rude I didn't have my glasses off to look you in the eye out there in the internet. So with this video, I wanted to try and create a sort of non-live live stream that I could post as a premiere video, which basically means when it first goes online on YouTube, there's a live chat at the side for the duration of the video so I can respond to your comments in the chat via text chat as well in real time. And then the video's just posted as if it's a normal video after that. So hopefully you'll enjoy this. The, the basic idea and the reason I'm trying this is because when I'm out and about in places like this covered over by trees, when I've tested out doing live streams in these sort of areas, even if there's a good phone signal for the broadband speed and the upload of the stream and stuff, as soon as you get to these sort of tree covered areas, the image quality really starts to nosedive. So I thought I'd try a slightly more long form type of walking and talking video where we get to go out and see a load of scenery and stuff. Yep, nobody behind us. That would have been a good start to the video. Um, and I can talk about some of the places along the canal, such as Colmere, where we're heading in this video, or the canal just by it at least. And uh, oh, like I say, act as if it's a stream and as if we're out walking and talking in real time, but I can actually respond in the text chat to you as you comment. So let's get stuck in. Well, here's a good start, my friends. We've got a load of Canada geese. And my goodness me, they make a great old honking noise as they're flying around, I can tell you that much. Used to be loads of them. I mean, possibly even hundreds of them, but just lots and lots of them that were down towards Bettisfield and Wixall, that sort of area. And when they all flew up and would just swarm away into the distance, you could hear them like there was some, like the apocalypse was happening. There was some sort of terrible rain of terror coming down from the sky as they passed over. But that wasn't a, well, making <laughs> a rain of terror from a flock of birds. That uh, insinuates that the boat might have been more white when I uh, looked out at the roof. At this point, we are probably, I'd say, two miles or so, maybe a little bit further from Ellesmere. We're past Blakemere and we're really getting into what I describe as the proper middle of nowhere places. First thing you'll notice is how beautiful it is out here. But beyond the sunshine and the real rural overgrown countryside on the far bank of the canal, if you just listen to the background noise we've got here, few birds and general sort of rural noise I would say. This is a good indicator that we're starting to get into these places where as I say it's what I call like real countryside where the little villages and places that have got uh, names marked on maps you turn up at them you can cycle or walk straight through them and be like oh that name on the map was referring to about three houses in a row somewhere and it's uh, not really the sort of place that you get to and go ah we've arrived here we are obviously but as I say these are the sort of places that I have thoroughly enjoyed spending an awful lot of my boat life as a percentage at least. Right my friends 30 foot of this little section of towpath is definitely one of the most iconic places from life with Narrowboat Tilly as at the end of my epic one and a half week journey from Stafford on board as my first, uh, my proper maiden voyage on Tilly this was where I finally moored up and was first able to sensibly walk down into Ellesmere and I can remember getting through the bridge here and just being like oh let's just moor up, just moor up and I looked on the map and thought eh, it can't be that far down into Ellesmere of course, when I started walking, it was a lot further than I'd uh, anticipated it being. But this was, well, there's a, there's a very good reason. And some of you, if you've tuned into these videos a long, long time, will know why I stopped so far away and was so relieved to uh, get the boat moored up for the night. And that was because I uh, had a little overheating problem, we'll say. And I can remember being up at Welshampton a few miles, maybe not even two miles from here in that direction. And I had to pull over because the overheating light was going and the engine was beeping and all sorts was going on. And that was pretty much how I'd spent the uh, entire day as the, I think it was the eighth or the ninth day on the Narrowboat Hilly. 
and you can imagine it was a pretty stressful time and experience especially as this last stretch was again I think only the second time that I'd done any boating on Tilly on my own so when I got through the bridge got just down so there's plenty of room for boats to go past oh look at this the sun's come out to dazzle us I moored up just along this stretch somewhere probably just behind us where I started filming this little clip and well it was somewhere that I would stop many times over the four years that I had on Narrowboat Tilly because firstly it's such a beautiful place admittedly it's a little bit awkward for getting in and out of work you can go all through the boondocks and through the middle of nowhere I don't know maybe a 15-16 mile bike ride from this bridge in that direction however uh, if I was feeling brave and it was a nice dry summer time like this then I might cycle down to Ellesmere and find some tarmac a little bit uh, closer by and uh, enjoy going up and over the brow which is a, a fairly decent hill to be doing at 6, 7 a.m. in the morning but one of the significant things about mooring up here and why I was drawn back to this place not only because of its sort of iconic nature as my my first mooring that I walked into Ellesmere and actually got some uh, chips and went and ate them by the mere which is the big lake at Ellesmere that the village town takes its name from and um, then obviously walked back out so as we walk a little bit further still in the direction away from Ellesmere if I pan the camera around this is what the significance of mooring up in this general area is and that my friends is that that is not all sky that we're looking at over the other side of the canal that is the absolutely beautiful Colmere now this area is not short on scenery and amazing little lakes and stuff I'd say Colmere is probably the second most famous after Ellesmere itself and if you get here at the right time you'll see the boats and the sailboats out on the water and it's a really popular area for people in the local sort of I don't know 20 mile vicinity because you've got like a proper little path through the woodland and all the rest of it and there's a couple of ways that you can get in and out of uh, walking around the perimeter of it and you can imagine mooring up there and as I say within a couple of minutes you can literally if you so wished probably run directly into the water of Colmere not something that I would recommend and over the years I can't tell you how much time I, I wouldn't be able to measure the hours that I've spent out and about in this area and wandering around Colmere with different people over the years and amazingly one time when I had uh, moved the boat up from Whitchurch I decided once again to stop in that particular place as I was having a mad old day because firstly I had to obviously boat all the way from well I say all the way it's not a huge distance to boat from Whitchurch but there are about four lift bridges in that trip so that can really really slow down your progress as you can imagine um, and I moored up at that place that I just mentioned by the bridge and just up the road from there there's a little campsite there you can obviously pitch your tent or they've got those uh, modern sort of glamping pods which are now sort of all the rage and bizarrely this very within hours of me mooring up at that bridge and I'm talking again maybe three four minutes walk from that bridge is this campsite my dad sent me a message to say oh I'm going to be stopping there for a couple of nights if you've got the boat in the area and I replied to him, I was like, well, you might not believe this, but I quite literally have got the boat as physically close as I possibly can to you. And um, again, I don't know, perhaps that's not much of a funny story or interesting anecdote on, in hindsight, but it's the best I could do under the pressure of filming this not quite live stream. See, I'm trying to not do too much editing in this video and if I say something stupid that falls flat I'm leaving it in and just uh, mangling my words with all of the gusto and forcefulness that I can master to hopefully make this a success. So again, you can hear a plane up there and that's another thing that's interesting about this area is very often and I've seen it multiple times and I'm sure I've probably mentioned it in videos but you'll see little stunt planes, I assume just privately owned stunt planes, practicing tricks and stuff. And I'm not joking, I've literally stood at the shores, the far shores from here of Colmere, looking up into the sky in like these sort of summery conditions, maybe a bluer sky even, 
I'm literally seeing planes doing loop the loops and uh, I can't think what it is, like corkscrews is it, when they're just spinning around all over the place. But yeah, it's a, it's a fascinating area really this, because you've just got so much empty, flat, rural countryside around here. I suppose it makes it ideal for that sort of stuff. Just as further down towards Frankton and even Tetchell and uh, places like Maysbury and that stretch and that area, there's a local, uh, I don't know if it's RAF base, but you see loads of helicopters about because they're training pilots. Right, my friends, if all goes to plan here, I'm going to peel off the path to this incredible wilderness to the left-hand side here and bring this video to a close as we gaze over the wonderful waters of Colmere. Although admittedly, with the summer growth and greenery, it might be a little bit more difficult than I'm anticipating. Oh, I remember this stump being here. Absolutely fascinating, sort of, just all the little roots and I don't know, I, I love stuff like this. A, a look at what's normally hidden in the world. The incredibly intricate and surprisingly beefy root system of a tree that has long since passed. Anyway, <laughs> that was a bit weird. Um, so if you've enjoyed this video, please do consider subscribing and please do hit the notification bell so that hopefully it will help YouTube uh, decide to actually show you some of my videos when I post them, as they seem to make up the rules as they go along these days. Well, my friends, I'm going to interrupt my own uh, end into this video here, as I've got to admit that we're struggling to actually get to the shore here. It is definitely, a uh, definitely the summer, we'll say that much. Um, Right, well I may just carry on walking a little bit further and then do the proper exit to this video when you can actually see Colmere on the other side of all this. Looking slightly more hopeful, if a little bit muddy. So I'm either following a stream down to Colmere or a beaten track. Although looking at it, I think it might be a stream that has since become a little track that people follow. Yes, this is a, a little bit slushy, Ooh, to say the least, look at that. <laughs> Right, big jump here, whoa, <laughs> just about survived. Well, my friends, I've had to stand on some precarious rotten old trees, but I've actually found Colmere itself to show you. And uh, as much as this isn't the most ideal view of the lake to give you, uh, if I just pan the camera down slowly here, you can see, uh, <laughs> like I say, this is just a collection of rotten, broken old sticks that we're stood on, which is why I am staying a good, foot or so back from the water's edge. Uh, so anyway, thank you very much for joining me on this little walk, my friends. As I was saying earlier, please do consider um, checking out my short boat life books for the Kindle and my paperback, which is a collection of some of the shorter Kindle books all in one volume. And uh, well, please do check the links in the description for all my social media and stuff where I post lots of this sort of footage and pictures of boat life in general. Well, until the next time, my friends, have an absolutely fantastic day. Keep it interesting, keep it boat worthy, and of course, my friends, farewell. <laughs>